Hello and welcome to another episode of TCAP Recap. Tonight we are staying in Fort Myers, Florida, taking a look at David Schumacher, one of the more colorful characters to come out of TCAP. And I'm not just talking about his TCAP performance, even though it was quite the interview with Chris Hansen that he had. So, much like Michael Willis from the last video, this guy got the TCAP charges dropped by subpoenaing, I don't know if that's how you say it, they gave a subpoena to Perverted Justice to get their chat logs, and Perverted Justice, instead of doing it, they wiped them and made it so they couldn't recover ch the chat logs, which was the main evidence. So the TCAP charges were dropped, but he still goes to jail, prison for four years and seven months on the other assault charges and whatnot. And he's back out in the world in the summer of 2017. In May, he takes a shot at being a YouTube star. And it doesn't go anywhere because on August 31st, 2017, he gets arrested for possession of marijuana over 20 grams and eventually gets sentenced in May 2019 to two and a half years in prison, which is such bullshit that people could people are still being put in cages for possessing something that that's legal if they just cross some imaginary lines in the ground. So maybe it's probably because he was a felon, I guess, that he got a stiffer sentence, but... I still don't like it. People shouldn't be going to prison for pot. End of story. But uh, back to the task at hand. So he gets out in 2020 after only serving eight months. So he gets out pretty quick. And he gets arrested for Grand Theft Auto. And he gets, com he gets found incompetent at two hearings, sentenced to his <laughs> mental facility, against his will, which I guess helped because in 2022, he actually emailed Joey's TCAP channel and gave an update. And I guess he's living in the UK with his girlfriend, Emma, and he's doing a lot better. So that's a positive thing. You know, one of the most important things is to make sure that these guys don't reoffend. Although a nice stiff prison sentence is a great deterrent and an appearance on TCAP even better. But to jump into his chat log, regardless of how well he's doing now in 2022, he was one dirty perverted motherfucker back at the time of the sting in 2006. He shows all the classic signs and techniques of grooming. She early on establishes her age as 14. And for reference, David is 21 at the time. And he doesn't immediately jump into sex. He compliments her, feels her out a little bit, brags that he's got a six-pack and muscly arms. Then he brings up her virginity and asks her if she's a virgin. She says yes, and his response is, Why are you afraid? Or saving yourself? Like, she has to answer to him for why that's still the case. Like, fuck off, man. She doesn't have to tell you shit. <laughs> oh, it just offended me even more than usual to have him, like, saying that in response. But he quickly gets on to telling herself that she needs to be able to carry herself like a woman because she needs to pass off as 17 at least to hang out with him and his friends and go to this party this block party that he invites her to. And another interesting and very dis just annoying and illuminating thing that David does the entire chat log is call the decoy girl. Just every, every chance he gets. That's short for what, girl? Did I scare you, girl? I ain't fat, girl. He just keeps going, just making sure that she knows she's a girl to him. Not necessarily 
B or Bea is her name is Beatrice and he calls her B. So that's what we'll go with. But it's just dehumanizing constantly calling her that. He would probably say that it's just something he does, but it's pretty casual misogyny is what it actually is. And he even, so he does all the standard Preto chatter and it's just as disgusting as any other Preto's. And he, of course, offers to teach her how to fuck. Like all the other Preto's, he wants to be her teacher. He suggests that they could make their own porno. So he also you know, expresses a desire to make child porn, which he knows is wrong. And he even says in the most incriminating line, so you're going to let me make a make you a woman then, right? Oh, God. He says a lot of, you know, gross stuff that I don't want to say out loud about tightness. And he gives the classic line, you want to make love or fuck for the first time, which Chris will bring up later. It's it's funny. He's got a funny way of speaking, although in the context, it's not very funny at all. He says something pretty rapey. He says, if I get you too high, you're not going to freak out on me when I start taking off your panties, are you? Like, what if she does, David? What if she does freak out and not want to do that anymore? What are you going to do? What does it matter what she says now, you fuckhead? Urgh. I just am kind of angry because getting into the lore and reading about what's up with him... Just reading about, like, the update and now, I just feel like he should have gotten that charge back back at the time because this was super dirty. And I'm now wondering, how is the chat log up on the Perverted Justice site if they destroyed the chat logs, if they destroyed their servers? I assume that it was always posted and it's just they needed the copy. They needed to get it directly from their computers something like that. I'm not the most tech savvy. So if any, if anybody knows more than, than me about that, please comment and enlighten me. Cause yeah, I, I haven't done a deep enough dive, but back to the chat log, he talks about deep throating. He, Ooh, he asks you ever been in love, baby? How much do you like me? So is he showing a little bit of Jerry Griffith? and starting to fall for the decoy or at least fall for the decoy as he's constructed her in his head you can tell uh he reminds me a lot of chris urban the meth head predator because david starts jumping off uh just getting real sexual with n barely any input or replies from the decoy and he just keeps going. He's not put off by the decoy being not enthusiastic. Like, they're saying K, LOL, yup, LOL, really? Stuff like that. They're standard replies. And he doesn't really take much notice. He just keeps going. Now, here's where something really fucked up happens he asks the decoy if she has any friends because his homeboys might want to holla at the decoy's friends who are her age as well she actually says that they're 14 15 and david told the decoy earlier that his friends are all older like me so referring to himself as a 21 year old so it's not a given that his friends are also 21 they could be 25 30 who knows but he's trying to set them up with 14 year olds why why is he doing this number one it's just stupid on a selfish level it gives him so much more exposure and opportunity to get caught number two it opens him up to some serious blowback from those friends so he's running the risk of getting his ass beaten as well. Uh, unless he knows his friends are scumbag perverts as well, also predos, and instead of beating his ass for trying to set him up 
with underage girl girls uh they would just be like oh thanks man uh rare opportunity for chris hansen to kind of do a three a three-way interview or a four-way actually because it would be him and two at least two of david's friends who david hooked up with underage girls through the decoy chris could go on the on the road and like bust them at the house the block party <laughs> Do a little live show. Oh, man. Oh, to catch a predator live. That that would be one for the history books. Uh, but let's finish up this chat log. He does say something that I found pretty funny. She says that she's been waiting all week to see him. And he says, me too. Decoy says, excited. And David says, good. It ain't the Grammys. It's just a party, baby. Same old shit we've been doing. <laughs> like, it's almost a non sequitur because he's just pulling it out of thin air. She didn't ask if it was the Grammys. She didn't ask what quality party it would be. It does seem like a little bit of bragging when he says, same old shit we've been doing. Like, okay, David, we get it. You party. You party. You do drugs. Although, to be fair, that might be more of a universal 21-year-old thing. I remember taking pride in my partying back in the day. Although, by the time I was 21, I had kind of progressed past the fun kind of partying, uh, of drinking at least. But yeah, when I was 19, 20, it was cool to go to a lot of parties and do drugs. Uh, that doesn't always work out. So, let's finish up this chat log. He irons out some details, casually mentions that his sister is bringing her two babies with him to pick up the 14-year-old that David plans to rape. So he's just got a lot thrown in here, into the mixing pot, and we haven't even gotten to the footage yet. So let's get to the segment and get this party started. All right, here we are. Just a quick shout out to To Catch a Predator Shows for posting the video. I will leave the link in the description. But jumping right to it, he definitely has a better fashion sense than Michael Willis. You know, his look is pretty 2000s, especially the sideways hat look. But he's, you know, uh, the solid colors. You can't really go wrong there. But let's see how he crosses the threshold. Because I do like to see how comfortable these guys are with entering a stranger's house to meet an underage girl for sex. Because that's, like, in my mind, that's just mind-blowing. That's such a crazy... Just walking into somebody's house unannounced that I don't know it sounds crazy enough. But when you add this to it, I can't wrap my head around it that they take this much risk for themselves. Because it seems like it's such an obvious setup. Like, if I compare it to somebody setting up a drug deal this way, somebody told me to come over to a house that I don't know and just walk right in to meet them for a drug deal, I'd be like, fuck no. I, I would be getting robbed if I went over there to do that. But uh, these guys don't really... I guess they're blinded by the horniness. They just aren't thinking straight. Especially this guy. I mean, bring in your sister and her two babies trying to set your friends up with her friends. <laughs> this guy, he hasn't even crossed the threshold and he already has all this shit hanging over him. <laughs> That's just making the situation crazier. But as he enters, focus on his swagger, number one, and his hat, because right now he's got it in traveling position, facing forward. As he enters the house, he's going to turn it into his player mode sideways to activate his macking abilities to lay it down on this 14-year-old he thinks is inside this house. Little does he know he will not be able to lay the mac down on Chris Hansen. Let's watch it happen. 
Act door is 21-year-old David Schumacher, screen name Freebird72000. He's been chatting online with a decoy posing as a young teen named B. Knock, knock. Hey, come on in. Our 19-year-old actress, the decoy playing B, invites him in. You can try one of my cookies. Some famous entry words there. <laughs> knock, knock. Just, you know, iconic words uttered by this iconic Preto. This hat, he's got the golden jewelry, got his chain. Echo Unlimited, which was a pretty big brand in the 2000s from my, my memory. So he's got it all put together as far as this style goes. And I think that's one of the reasons why he's so humorous is he's just incongruous with the standard Preto mold. Like, when I think of Predator, I think of Dan Allen, Anthony Palumbo. You usually think of, like, older guys who are kind of losers or weirdos in some way, perverts, whatever. This guy, he brings up a valid point when he says to the cops, why do I need to go after a 14-year-old when I can get all the pussy I want? And it's like, yes, David, that's exactly the question. Why are you here to meet this 14-year-old if that's the case? And he's also... He's 21 years old, he's confident as fuck when he walks in, and when he confronts, he's confronted by Chris Hansen, so he's unlike other Predos in that sense as well. Maybe it's because he's had so many run-ins with the police up to this point, who knows, but he's, he's all spitfire and vinegar when Chris Hansen comes out to interrupt his date. <laughs> But Chris Hansen gets the final word in. Cookies, they're so good. Did you make them? Yeah, I made them myself. All right, I eat them. I like chocolate chip. The old home baked cookie trick. Just like uh, Michael Willis, he just dives right into those cookies, starts gobbling one up, and it looks like he grabbed the remote control to turn on the TV. Who the fuck does this guy think he is? Walking into a stranger's house and turning on their TV. God damn, that's that's some crazy shit. <laughs> this guy doesn't know how to behave. Online, he invites the girl, who told him she was 14 and a virgin, to a birthday party. And from his online chat, it appears he has his sights on a party for two. I want to be your first, baby. Okay. You're going to put my in your mouth? Because I like that. I guess I can try it. Just let me drive, baby. I'll show you heaven. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he goes God. on to talk about... Standard, standard predator fare. So he's checking off all the boxes for your typical predo in that chat log. ...about having different kinds of sex with the virgin, and then gets almost poetic. Do you want to make love or for your first time? What's the difference? It's just raw passion, and making love is a connection of bodies, I guess. Freebird 72,000 all I don't know if I'd call this guy poetic. I feel like that's a common commonly understood distinction between different types of passion or sex, you know. I he's not reinventing anything here. He's just laying down some pre pre-planned lines that he's been sitting on and he finally got the chance to use them. Let's keep going. Also mentions online that he's going to bring marijuana. Did you bring some green? No, we're going to smoke some marijuana and get some. <laughs> Did you get some green? Oh, man. I've never called it green. I, I've heard it a couple times in the wild. People have called it green, but never a commonly thing. <laughs> uh, common thing. Excuse me. So, red flags once again. I always get back to the topic of red flags, but in this case, David was kind enough to wear a red flag so he could just see it as he was walking around. But what decoy, what 14-year-old girl would say, did you bring the green? <laughs> it just sounded unnatural. Let's get back to it. Cookies are good munchies. Yeah, man, tell me your parents are rich. What do they do for a living? Hey, I have a seat right there. <laughs> what are you? What's happening? Like so many of the men who walk into this house, the man sits and answers questions. 
can't figure out if I'm the girl's father or a police. He is so unhappy. Uh, I'm going to leave the original sound effects in there because that's the way I found the video. And I'm just going to let them have the honor of doing the reveal. But you can tell right when Chris walks in, this guy, he is not so cool, calm, and collected. Like right there, he <laughs> you can just see the sadness, the surprise, the feeling of foolishness he's probably experiencing, realizing that he was saying all that dirty shit to a decoy and not an actual girl. So he's probably all just snapping this into realization in this moment right here. And it's not like David is an unintelligent person. He definitely has a certain cunning and he just can't follow through on the crimes, I guess, because he gets busted. But he has enough sense to know that in this moment, everything has changed for him. He's been in trouble before, but this is trouble that he does not need, as Dan Allen says, because this is, you know, going after a kid. That's a whole different can of worms than beating somebody up or something. But let's let's continue and see how he he rises up again like a phoenix from this and decides that he can talk his way out of it. It's it's entertaining. He can't figure out if I'm the girl's father or a police officer. And remember, he has no idea he's being videotaped. What's going on? What's, you tell me what's going on. You a dad or something? What are you doing here? I'm David. How you doing? David, I'm Chris. Nice to see you. How's everything? Yeah. Chilling. Birthday party. So the girl here was going to go with you to the birthday party. Who are you? So you can see his mind working very fast in this interaction because he asked, what's going on? The most important question for him because that's going to determine what's going to happen to him in the near future. He obviously knows the stakes of what he's gotten himself into. And the second one is, are you her dad or something? I don't think he truly believes that Chris is the father because this guy understands violence and rage and anger. He knows that if this was the father, he'd be getting his head <laughs> smashed in. But... He still wants to get back to the question of what's going on. So he interrupts Chris. He interrupts the discussion and introduces himself like this is just a normal meeting of people who share a mutual friend or something. In this case, a 14 year old girl that he is just uh, just bringing to a birthday party. And it's unfortunate that he was able to skate on the charges get him dismissed and without the chat logs being entered into the record you can't prove that he was the guy on the computer they don't have the records of the computer at all so he's free to just make up whatever he wants as a pretense for why he was there and the court can't really prove beyond a reasonable doubt that he did it without the chat log that's why the charges got dismissed <clears throat> that's why the charges got dismissed we'll find out in a later video we'll dive into what happened there in the great fort meyer sting computer wipe <laughs> but uh let's get back to the video uh he's going to now take a kind of like surprised like what, what's going on you know he's the offended one almost not offended at this point but he's the surprised one like what is chris doing it barging in on him and i might have said it with other predators but this is the correct approach to take if you really thought you were there for an innocent reason like if he was meeting a 21 year old woman and chris walked out he would probably act in a similar manner like what's you know, I'm in your house, but what's going on? I was just here to do this completely innocent thing, you know? And unfortunately, in the end, that was 
the one path that enabled him to not incriminate himself in the act of picking up the decoy. So uh, it, it was like the perfect storm for him to get <clears throat> the charges dismissed. But let's let's continue. He is a fascinating preto to watch. Watch do the dance with Chris. I'll get to that in a minute. All right. What's your date's name for the party? B. B. And how old is B? I don't know. He didn't really tell me. But ooh, said a lie. Looks like he said a lie. Is looking at Chris to detect if Chris noticed that it's a lie. Because he needs to know how much Chris knows. Like, does this guy have the chat log? What? What's the deal? So, I... This is a very uh, guilty-looking face right here. He has turned his hat to a sideways position. I guess this is, like, manipulator mode or <laughs> elusive mode. But, uh, yeah, I guess uh, he has a different hat position for every situation. Let's see how this lie plays out for him. She did tell him. Online, she typed her age, 14, female, South Florida. And he said, Ooh. what would your parents say about you talking to someone a cop? Ear. You seem like law enforcement. I happen to know law enforcement. You do. So you're an expert in this area. No, right? no, I'm just saying, you, <laughs> you come off as law enforcement. Really? So you know how you come? Damn. Uh, Chris really threw him off with his little repartee. Uh asking him if he's an expert in law enforcement and asking if he's an expert in this. And all poor David could do is just repeat, you seem like law enforcement, which ultimately isn't saying anything. And Chris isn't going to give him an answer, of course. Uh, Chris never does. But Chris does like acting as if he is part of law enforcement. It is definitely an attitude, an image that he likes to give off to the Predos to get that, that little bit more of authority. So, David isn't wrong. He's just being tricked by Chris's, uh, Chris's excellent skills at pretending to be a cop. You know, he's, he's got it all down. How's that? Somebody who's very nervous. Oh. Somebody who came over here to have sex with a 14-year-old girl. Oh, man, Chris is chopping this guy down to size. Chris has recognized the threat that this guy poses. This guy's coming at him hard. He's not a normal preto, and he's not backing down. So Chris just throws these things at him. You seem like you're very nervous. That undercuts his confidence because it can be pretty... Like, if somebody tells you, hey, you're coming off as very nervous and you're doing something wrong or you're in a bad, the wrong sit side of a situation, it can definitely elicit some pretty intense feelings of nervousness and get a response from somebody, or at least from me. If somebody says, you know, I stole the cookies from the cookie jar and somebody says, you seem very nervous about those cookies, I'll just be like, ah, damn it, you got me. <laughs> it's an, it's a, a little bit of rhetorical trickery by Chris and then he also throws that second one at him How's that? somebody who's very nervous somebody who came over here to have sex with a 14 year old girl 14 year old <laughs> so he hits him with the first one and he has perfect delivery and then he drops the bomb that he came here to meet with a 14 year old girl for sex which David did do and knows he did because he knows what he wrote in that chat log so he's got to play this off big time he's going to go with the overboard reaction uh you'll remember michael willis from the last video gave one of the worst performances of surprise when chris dropped this bomb on him and here on the other end of the spectrum we have david who gives an oscar worthy performance of not knowing that the girl was 14. Uh, I'm just going to rewind it to start from so you can see this whole facial movement one more time. And see Chris's delivery, honestly, because it's fantastic. You come off as law enforcement. Really? So. You know how you come off? How's that? Somebody who's very nervous. 
somebody who came over here to have sex with a 14-year-old girl. 14-year-old? He's holding that face because he wants to make sure Chris realizes that's ridiculous. I would never do that. And again, we come to the factor that if they didn't have access to the chat logs, if law enforcement couldn't use them in court, his performance would be able would be like a decent excuse. He'd be able to pull it off without the chat logs. And it's just crazy that that's what actually happened. I don't want to harp on it, but it's just, it's a very intriguing situation. It's going to be something I investigate once I finish these first 30 Pretos. But let's get back to David. Some of what he said online. Are you sexy naked? Have you ever played with yourself? You're going to put my in your mouth. And I like Because I like dirty. that, I'll teach you. And you're trying to say? I'm trying to say it makes it look like yeah. you came here. I didn't come here. I can't they pick her sex. up. Ballsy move by David to just say, and what are you trying to say in response to those damning messages? So he's, you can tell that he's a practiced master of deceit for sure. Because he's, again, giving a pretty good performance. At times, it's over realistic it's just too much like when he held that face for just a little too long but overall he's definitely proving to be one of the most accomplished predators when it comes to deceit dishonesty lying so let, let's see how he continues to build this story of the role-playing chat rooms to see we watch it kind of progress as he figures it out with an underage girl. We were in a role playing chat room, dude. And what role were you playing exactly here? People play roles, man. Anytime, never ask <laughs> role playing. People just talk. It's such bullshit now that I'm hearing it again, but Chris asks an excellent question. What role was David playing in that situation if he was role playing sex between him and a 14 year old girl? He would still be role playing as a predator and he still showed up so man he's just got so fucking lucky it is oh my god dude is this is this some kind of hold up man you got a warrant because i mean if the girl don't want to come and if you got a problem a warrant. <laughs> i love that he's still thinking there's a girl somewhere that might want to come with him <laughs> like dude come on <laughs> that that was never ever in the cards for you buddy <laughs> But I really shouldn't be laughing because if he's really devious, he's still just lying to go along with his story of meeting a 14-year-old girl for picking her up and taking to her birthday party. Nothing sexual. So he's got to say these kind of things to pass it off that way. Whether he's that devious or this is just kind of aligning with what he's saying and I'm adding too much meaning to it don't know because his follow his life choices don't indicate that there's a high level of intelligence but in this situation there's flashes of what could only be stupidity or like <laughs> manipulative brilliance it's quite again back to the incongruity of David Schumacher what are you, a defense lawyer now? I'm saying, man, you don't got no cause to hold me. I'm, I got no problem sitting here to talk to you. Right? Okay. He sticks to the story that he's here to take the girl to a party, but it turns out... This is shaping up to be a battle of the titans right here. You got David Schumacher throwing a lot of courteous, righteous deflections at him. He's, he's trying, his, he's showing, hey man, to your house, I'm here, but I'm not doing anything wrong, so why are you coming at me? Back off. And Chris is hitting back with jabs and sarcasm and not holding back. He's probably really enjoying this because he loves a real a real rowdy preto. He loves taking him down. Uh, he does have one trick left up his sleeve. Uh, he did throw the quotes from the chat log in David's face, 
And David, again, just said, so what? Role-playing chat room. And that's holding up so far. When the cameras come out, that's when the real fun begins. But let's watch Chris finish up this round with David. He didn't come here alone. Waiting outside in the car is his sister and her two young children. He says his sister was going to drive them to the party. Yeah. And your poor sister's waiting outside with two babies in the car? Yeah. So because you had to come over here and have sex with a 14-year-old I'm not. I didn't come over here to have sex. You, why would you put that sister of yours I didn't come position? over here to have sex. I come over here to get the girl. So Chris is just bringing in the big guns and hammering this dude. He knows that David intended to have sex with the decoy. And he knows that David knows that Chris knows <laughs> that he was there to have sex with the decoy. So there's a battle of wills and hidden agendas at play here. And Chris, who has the advantage of knowing that this is being filmed, just keeps on hammering into the chat log of the interaction, so to speak, that he was here to have sex with the decoy. And Chris means more he was here to have sex with the decoy ultimately is what I think he's saying and David is taking advantage of the vagueness of the statement to say no I wasn't going to have sex I didn't come here to have sex with her I just came here to pick her up to bring her somewhere else to have sex with her because he was going to do it at the block party in a car in somebody a friend's house who knows but I don't think he was going to do it in this house because he doesn't know this house He's not going to be comfortable here. And his sister's waiting outside for him. He's going to want to enjoy his time raping this minor. So he needs to get her out of her safety zone, out of her comfort zone, so she doesn't know where she is and is dependent on him. That's what Chris could be saying. But Chris, who knows the cameras come out soon, is just going to say that he was here to have sex because it's true. And the chat log backs it up. So... Chris is taking a blunt force approach, and it it is battering aside David's uh, deflections, I think. I think Chris is coming out ahead in this one. Girl, and go to the party, dude. We learn his sister apparently didn't know he was trying to meet an underage girl. Later, you'll find out what happens when I tell him national television. <laughs> Remember the 21-year-old who duped his sister into driving him to meet a girl who said she was 14? Okay. And we're doing a story do on a girl who try to meet kids on the internet. Uh, hey, man, I don't want, I don't want to um, be on, on the news, you feel me? We are filming. I don't want to be on the news, dog. <laughs> well, it's a little late for that. Classic misunderstanding there. David says, I don't want to be on the news, you feel me? And Chris says, we are filming, thinking that's what David said, something about filming. So funny, funny little misunderstanding there. One for the the history books of t Captain. But David is about to get into some funny business and put his shirt over his head and then put his hat back on his head, which it looks goofy, but it is smart because it's holding his shirt in place so he doesn't have to. So maybe David is actually some kind of savant at his particular brand of deceit and these little tricks just come to him naturally. Stuff that us normal people wouldn't realize to do. <laughs> okay, let's get let's get to it though, because it is pretty funny. Dog. Now if there's <laughs> anything else you want Sorry, I got we gotta watch this one more time because Chris cracks a real good joke on David here. I don't want to be on the news, dog. Well, it's a little late for that, dog. <laughs> now, if there's anything else you want to tell me... He quickly comes up with a disguise. And as far as interviews go, this... Excellent job by Chris. Excellent job. ...may be a television first. All I got to say is, ain't no, nothing going on here, dude. Nothing funny going on here. <laughs> nothing funny. I think that you can look at this screen and look at what was going on in that room and say objectively that there was something funny going on. Not in the sense that David means, but <laughs> it is still funny. All I got to say is ain't no, nothing going on here, dude. No and again, this goes back to his 
his incongruity and his kind of, you know, he's got this inner he's got these inner contradictions and they all kind of, you know, push in different ways, making him a much more interesting character. And whether it's the funny stuff, like him doing something funny, as he says, no funny business, or something sinister, like him being a 21-year-old guy like this, this guy who seems normal, but still goes after, <clears throat> excuse me, <coughs> That he's this normal guy, but he's going after 14-year-olds. So that seems to be a key ingredient in making for an interesting preto. But let's get back to the funny business. Nothing funny going on here. Nothing funny going on. No. The girl, <laughs> if the girl's really 14, and I know, but... She told you she was 14. See, well, we were in a role-playing chat room, dude. You know how many times I hear that? <laughs> Am I being held up here? And what is this role-playing chat room that they all speak of? Was there a specific chat room in AOL that was for predators to role-play being predators? That's what he seems to be implying with this role-playing chat room. And that's just as bad because he showed up, which indicates that whatever it was at the beginning, role-play or not, it became real. So not, not the best defense in the long run, unless... You get an amazing stroke of luck, and the chat logs get deleted. Like, happened here. Damn. You're not being held up. You're free to walk out that same door Dude, you walked do in. Do y'all want to interview? Hey, how y'all doing? Okay. How y'all doing? NBC? NBC. NBC. And you're Chris, Chris Hansen. All right, Dateline listen. NBC. Let me, let me, let me explain <laughs> something to NBC. So he's realized that... <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> Hello. <clears throat> Hello. Hello. So he's realized that he's going to be on the news, whether he wants to or not, because of what he's doing, his silly antics. So he quickly switches back into his quote unquote normal guy routine where he was just a guy here, nothing sexual, and starts giving uh, the news crew the interview they wanted. Uh, but he wants to, he does show some signs of nervousness and anxiety. Uh, he tries to smoke a cigarette inside a house that clearly, clearly they won't let him smoke, but he tries anyway. So he's not as cool and collected as he'd like us to believe. Let's see for a second here. I, I don't know what kind of um, rap y'all got on, on people, but maybe y'all can get the whole story because this girl is in a role playing chat room. Whose house is this? Can I smoke with you? No, you can't smoke. <laughs> I don't think so. His story is such bullshit that he realizes it after saying it and wants to smoke a cigarette. He wants to set the record straight and say that this girl was in a role playing chat room, whatever that means. Because <laughs> again, the implications of that are sinister as fuck, too. So, <laughs> his plans keep on falling through. He stays strong, though. You can smoke outside. All right, dude. Whatever. He decides to go out the front door. Run into the car. <laughs> Move. He finally takes the hint from Chris. You can smoke outside, buddy. And I'm sure he expected the cops. But did he really think that if he could just run, get to the car, he could get out of there with no problems? That... They wouldn't be able to just follow them. What is he going to tell his sister? Like, drive, drive, drive. Don't pull over for anybody. No. What are you doing, David? But that doesn't stop detectives from oh, catching gave, him gives up. and placing him under arrest. Oh! <laughs> and when he shows up... They dogpile him anyway. I know in the other episode they said uh, it's because it's so easy to get a conceal and carry permit in Florida and just carry a gun, but he he tried. He tried to assume the position, and they were already, they had the, their momentum. They weren't stopping for nothing. 
until they got their target. Up at the transfer station, police search him, and he keeps talking. Y'all thought y'all was going to get some green. Hey, NBC, two words, role plan. He's talking about green again. Uh, maybe it's the Florida thing. Maybe that's why he didn't hear a red flag when the girl talked about it. Maybe that's why it sounded normal to him. And I'm the weirdo for not understanding the slang. <laughs> but... He's pretty happy that he doesn't have any on him. He was probably going to cheap out somehow, this girl. Like, either not get it or try to get her to pay for it or something. He was going to tell her, like, oh, grab some money. It's $20. We, we can split it. <laughs> and then just buy $20 worth and smoke most of it and give a little bit to her. He's just that kind of guy. <laughs> you know it. But... Now that's looking like a real good idea because he doesn't have it on him, so they can't bust him for it. Green. Hey, NBC, two words, role plan, chat room, dude, because the girl was role playing, man. <laughs> okay, so there's a lot of controversy. Is role playing chat rooms two words or four words or even three words? So role playing... I usually see that hyphenated, and that's how I write it myself. Chat rooms is usually one word. I do not consider a hyphenated word one word, though, so I would say there's three words in there. It's role-playing chat rooms, so three. Now, that's just my opinion, of course. Everybody, it's a very, it's a vague statement, I guess. Maybe it's not, and I am just an ignorant asshole, <laughs> and somebody's, like, written to the American Grammar Society to, to figure it out already. <laughs> but I'm sticking with it. It's three words, David Schumacher, three. But let's continue. We're almost done. Checked with perverted... We'll see. Shout out again to To Catch a Predator shows. I assume that they're the ones who edited the video. So they made some good choices. I Definitely some good choices. Um, but that's the end of David Schumacher. I really appreciate it if you watched the video. Uh, I'm honored that you've given me your time. If you've subscribed, uh, that just warms my heart, man. I just love to see it. And it makes me feel like I'm actually doing some good here. I'm a dumbass and didn't record multiple, multiple segments on the weekend. So I'm just recording these day by day after work, and it's taking a bit of a toll on me, so I apologize for my voice as well, but as long as people are watching it, I am extremely happy to keep, keep up the work, so appreciate the subscriptions, appreciate the views, appreciate all the comments, I'll read them, like them, reply to most of them, so I hope you guys have a nice rest of your day slash night, and I will catch you on the flip side.